Hello, this is Gigi Berardi, and I am reading again from my book, Food Wise, from the introductory chapter. And one of the themes today has to do with the fierce food beliefs and the information that fuels those beliefs um, affecting our choices about foods. Personally, I want to get all the advice I can get from Carlo Petrini, writing about slow food, expounding on the virtues of local foods that soak up their unique geographic identity from soils and water and climate, to TV's Iron Chefs, to USDA policy wonks, because I like food and I like to try different foods and I like to challenge my ideas about food. As the advice changes over time, I find my personal food worldview does as well. In the early 1990s, I tried to come up with an improved universal theory of food in my book, Finding Balance. Instead, I expanded on rather conventional ideas for the time, which seemed like common sense. Eat complex carbohydrates such as whole grains and other fibrous plants and avoid fat. Sugar had not yet been proclaimed our worst nightmare, although groups such as the Center for Science and the Public Interest were valiantly trying to publicize the problem. One of the most effective messages at the time was in the film, Eat, Drink, and Be Wary, where about nine teaspoons of sugar were, slowed, were slowly poured into an empty Coca-Cola bottle, showing just how much sugar was in a 12 ounce soda what looked like a quarter of the whole bottle. Yet as I was writing about my findings, a biology department colleague scolded me for getting it wrong. He said I should downplay eating carbs and send a clear message to consume certain fats and reduce others found in processed foods and definitely avoid sugars. I didn't believe him. This was in the early 1990s and I was in Los Angeles at the time. While my thinking these days is markedly different, most people now recognize the problems with overloading on sugar, I was doing the best I could with the information I had then. That's how food fads arise and persist, drawing overly broad conclusions from limited information and not remaining alert to new contradictory or counterintuitive information as it emerges. I wish I had been wiser then, especially since I do enjoy breaking apart old ideas and considering new ones. Now, rather than seeking a simple food prescription, say, the virtues of low-fat, low-calorie diets, I focus on key principles of how to think about food. I don't want to push one diet or another, this fat or that. I've learned that any diet that looks like the answer right now may well look ridiculous in 10 years time. Instead, I want to cultivate a practice of critical thinking about food that allows for cultural shifts and openness to new scientific information and lets me keep pace with each new food or diet breakthrough. My current thinking on relevant scientific information is presented in part two of Food Wise but clearly this thinking will be influenced by new and additional research. One place to find my current thinking on new research is on my blog. This is on my website, a new website hosted by my university, Western Washington University. And it is at wp.wwu.edu forward slash Gigi Berardi, all one word. G-I-G-I-B-E-R-A-R-D-I. -I -I. Is this itself a fad, the questioning of conventional wisdom? And that is in fact what my publisher had asked me. Gigi, how do we know that this is not a fad? And that's when I had to say, look, all we can do is stop, think, then act using wise whole, whole foods, whole people, whole farms, whole systems, 
I for information with an emphasis on reliable science, S for sustainable, personally, as well as for the planet, and E, celebrating experience, even in our own kitchens, in isolation, self-imposed kitchen isolation now. That's what we have to do. And then slowly, hopefully, we will become more wise. Unfortunately, we have social media that allows us to share some of that wisdom that we're getting as a result of experience. Thank you.